ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಲೇಡೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜೆಂಟಲ್ಮೆನ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಟು ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಮೆಡ್ರಾಸ್ ನಲ್ಲ ಮೆಡ್ರಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಚೆನ್ನೈ ಹೆರಿಟೇಜ್ ಮೆಡ್ರಾಸ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾಟ್ಯರಂಗಂ ದ ಡಾನ್ಸ್ ವಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನಾರದ ಗಾನ ಸಭಾ ಟೇಕ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪ್ಲೆಜರ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಕೊರಿಯೋಗ್ರಾಫ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಅಕೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಡ್ರಾಸ್ ವೀಕ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಯು ದಿ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೀಮಿಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಕ್ ವಡಿ ನಡೈ ಚಿಂದ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಡ್ರಾಸ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇಯರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಔಟ್ಸೆಟ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ಮುತ್ತಯ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಟಿ ಚಾರಿ ಫಾರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ನಾಟ್ಯರಂಗಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಹಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೊಜೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡ್ರಾಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ವಿತ್ ಅವರ್ ಡಾನ್ಸ್ ಫೀಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ದಟ್ ದಿ ಲೊಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೊಜೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ ಲೊಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿಮೇಟ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ದ ಫೀಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ಲೇವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡ್ರಾಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಸೀಕ್ರೆಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ರಿಮೇನ್ ಅ ಸೀಕ್ರೆಟ್ ಎನಿ ಲಾಂಗರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಟೆಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಯು ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಲಿಬರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಎಂಬೆಲಿಷ್ ದ ಚಿಂದ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡೆಡ್ ಟೂ ಸಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಲೈಕಡಲೋರಂ ಅಳಹುರ ತಿಹಳುಂ ಮಾನಗರಂ ಚೆನ್ನೈ ಮಾನಗರಂ ದಿಸ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಬೈ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುಧಾ ಸೇಷೇನ್ a very familiar and popular figure to people here at the tag center and uh, two years ago natyarangam had organized a thematic festival on sacred places in india and chennai was one of them and it was dr sudha was one of the resource persons and she had composed this song in that context and the dancer who had then presented chennai was also uh, shrimati gayatri balagurunathan whom you are going to be seeing here today the other song has been included towards the end of the chinde it's a very popular and famous composition by papanasam sivan i'm not going to tell you what it is let there be some suspense but i'm sure you'll identify and relate with it as soon as you hear it and heritage walks are now very popular and we have a master walkie talkie sri ram right here but what was very interesting was that we found this chind had this very concept of a heritage walk and this is what kind of inspired us to take this up for this occasion of madras week and today it's something very special where you're actually going to have a dance walk you'll have the dancers uh, walking all the way from george town to mailai kapali koil they're going to do all the walking and you are going to walk along with us and after that you'll have the talk by v shri ram so ladies and gentlemen sit back and enjoy the vari nade chind presented to you by gayatri balagurunathan pt narendran and the members of the orchestra thank you ಕತ <laughs> 
தர்மராஜா கோயில் இது தண்ணீர் தொட்டியை பாராய் ஆனை கெவுனி இது அடுத்தார் போல் தோட்டம் அட எவ்வளோ பெரிய தோட்டம் இது என்ன தோட்டமுங்க இது விக்டோரியா தோட்டம் இதன் விசித்திரமான தோட்டம் இது விசித்திரமா கொஞ்சம் சொல்லுங்களே மண்ணாலே மேடிட்டு மரத்தாலே பாலம் கட்டி வேறால் பெருத்த புழலேறி தண்ணீரை மண்ணாலே மேடிட்டு மரத்தாலே பாலம் கட்டி வேறால் பெருத்த புழலேறி தண்ணீரை வாட்டர் பைப்ஸ் வைத்து வழங்குகிறார் பாராய் வாட்டர் பைப்ஸ் வைத்து வழங்குகிறார் பாராய் வாலிப பெண்கள் வரிசை வரிசையாக தண்ணீரை முன்பு தலையிலே தான் எடுத்து இசைய வழி நடந்து ஏகிறார் பாரா ஆண் கரடி பெண் கரடி அதற்கு ஒரு கொட்டாயாம் பெரும் புலி சிறுத்தை போன சிங்கம் கல்லானை ஒன்று கனமுடன் வாழ்வதற்கு சுற்றிலும் தகட்டினால் சொகுசாய் மறைத்துவிட்டு ஆள் ஒருவருக்குமே அரையணா வாங்குகின்றார் இன்ஸ்பெக்டர் இவர்தான் எதிரிலே பாராய் பலகை வாராவதி பாங்கான மேடு சுற்றிலும் தண்ணீர் சொகுசாக போட்டு போகலாங்களா
காலனா வாங்குவோர் வேண்டாம் வேண்டாம் வந்துவிடு மலையிலே வாழும் மலை நாகம் பாராய் பார்த்தால் பயம் கொடுக்கும் பட்சி இது கேளாய் மலையிலே வாழும் மலை நாகம் பாராய் பார்த்தால் பயம் கொடுக்கும் பட்சி இது கேளாய் பிள்ளைகள் விளையாட பெருமையான ஊஞ்சலிது பிள்ளைகள் விளையாட பெருமையான ஊஞ்சலிது நெருப்பு தின்னும் பட்சியின் நேர்மையை பாராய் நெருப்பு தின்னும் பட்சியின் நேர்மையை பாராய் நாம குருவியுடன் நாராயண பட்சிகளும் மயில்களும் குயில்களும் மருவி விளையாடுதலும் நாம குருவியுடன் நாராயண பட்சிகளும் மயில்களும் குயில்களும் மருவி விளையாடுதலும் புள்ளி மான்களுடன் புகழான கிளைமான்கள் வெள்ளை மான்கள் இது விளையாடி மேயுதுபா புள்ளி மான்களுடன் புகழான கிளைமான்கள் வெள்ளை மான்கள் இது விளையாடி மேயுதுபா கடலை கொடுத்தால் கையால் சலாம் செய்யும் நாட்டு குரங்குகளை நலமுடனே பாராய் கடலை கொடுத்தால் கையால் சலாம் செய்யும் நாட்டு குரங்குகளை நலமுடனே பாராய் இன்னும் வினோதங்களை எடுத்துரைப்பேன் கேளாய் சூக்ஷமமாய் சொன்னேன் பார் தங்கமே என் தங்கமே இன்னும் வினோதங்களை எடுத்துரைப்பேன் கேளாய் சூக்ஷமமாய் சொன்னேன் பார் தங்கமே என் தங்கமே பாரிய துறைகளுக்கு பாண்ட்மேடை பாராய் செவ்வாய் சனிகளிலும் சாயங்கால வேளையிலே இங்கிலீஷ் வாத்தியம் இன்பமுடன் கேட்கலாம் விட்டு கண்ணங்களவுகளும் கண்டபடி சண்டை செய்து பட்டை அடிப்பவர்கள் துண்டகாதனம் செய்யும் துன்மார்கர் இருக்கின்ற மஞ்சள் இதுதான் மாங்குயிலே பாராய் மஞ்சள் இதுதான் மாங்குயிலே பாராய்
சதுரான ஆஸ்தந்துரை ஷாப்புகளிருக்கின்ற சட்டத்தை பாராய் எந்த வெளிட்டானா மாதா கோயில் பாராய் எதிரிலே ராயப்பேட்டை சீர் பெற்று வாழும் செல்லப்பம் மிட்டாய் கடை அலுவாவும் புகழான நொக்கலும் லட்டு ஜிலேபியுடன் நலமான அதிரசமும் புகழான நொக்கலும் லட்டு ஜிலேபியுடன் நலமான அதிரசமும் பால் கோவாயி மிர்த்தியும் பாங்கான பக்கோடா வாங்கி தருகிறேன் வாழ்மையிலே கேளாய் பால் கோவாயி மிர்த்தியும் பாங்கான பக்கோடா வாங்கி தருகிறேன் வாழ்மையிலே கேளாய் ப 
தாண்டவராயன் தண்ணீர் பந்தல் இது உண்டு இழைப்பாரி ஒருமித்து போகலாம் சன்ன விநாயகர் சன்னிதி இதுதான் அம்பட்டன் வாராவதி அதனையும் நாம் நடப்போம் சாமி மனம் இது அன்புடனே சேவிப்பாய் குடம் சட்டி செய்யும் குசப்பேட்டை இதுதான் குடம் சட்டி செய்யும் குசப்பேட்டை பாராய் வந்தோ மயிலை ந 
ನಗರ್ ಒಂದೋ ಮಯಿಲೇ ನಗರ್ ಒಂದೋ ಬಾಳ್ ಮಯಿಲೇ ಕೇಳಾಯ್ ತೀರಾವಿನೈ ತೀರ್ಕುಂ ತಿರುಕುಳತ್ತೈ ಪಾರಾಯ್ ಮಯಿಲೈ ನಗರ್ ಒಂದೋ ಬಾಳ್ ಮಯಿಲೇ ಸೆಲ್ವ ವಿನಾಯಗರು ಪಳ್ಳಿ ದೈವಾನಯುಡ ಮಡಿವೇಲರ್ ಬರುಗಿರಾರ್ ಶಿವನಡಿಯಾರ್ ಗಡಿವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ವ ವಿನಾಯಗರು ಪಳ್ಳಿ ದೈವಾನಯುಡನ್ ಮಡಿವೇಲರ್ ಬರುಗಿರಾರ್ ಕಾಣ 
கோட்டி வேண்டும்
Good morning, friends. Welcome you all to this uh, celebration of Madras Week. This is the sixth year that we are celebrating uh, Madras Week, and I'm really overwhelmed by the kind of response that Mr. Mutaya and the team that has worked together has managed to generate for the Madras Week celebrations. Uh, before I take you on a journey which will retrace the path that the couple took in coming all the way from Georgetown to Mylapur. Just a few words about this kind of literature which is called Gujili Padalkal. I first came across a book written by Dr. A. R. Venkata Chalapati of the Madras Institute of Development Studies which is called Muchandi Lakyam and the entire work is dedicated to this kind of literature and as per that work, his, uh, his book it says that in an era when there was no television, when radio was unheard of and when newspapers were still in their infancy, daily news was disseminated by means of songs in Madras city. And it could be as mundane as the introduction of kerosene oil, it could be as sensational as the murder of a woman in a railway train, it could be as big as an event as the hanging of Bhagat Singh. But all the information would be disseminated by means of songs, which would be sung and performed on roadsides, the songs would then be printed on extremely cheap paper and distributed to people who stand around. I think Chennai was a very musical city. And uh, this literature is what is called Kalana Putaham because that was the price of the book. And invariably, they would also indicate the tunes of certain popular songs in which you could sing these songs. The same tune you could adopt for singing these songs. And there would be no notation of any sort, but they would just give the words. Now, uh, the Tamil was generally not of a very high quality. Even here you can see the lyrics keep repeating the same words. But so the uh, literati of the city, they look down on the Kalana Puttahangal. Even authors like Madhavaya and others, they have written very derogatorily about uh, these uh, Kalana Puttahangal. But what I found, what Dr. Venkata Chalapati has found very fascinating is that they are able to give us the day-to-day -day life of Madras and surrounding areas. Madurai also apparently was a great center for such Kalana Puttahangal. They were considered to be seditious at one time and especially with the coming of Lord Willingdon, there were great, great attempts at outlawing these Kalana Puttahangal. But there was great difficulty in doing it because though the book said that it was published at a certain location, if the police visited the spot, they would not even find the street, leave alone find <laughs> the name of the publisher. So it was very difficult to stamp out the Kalana culture and large collections of this culture, of these works are found at the Roja Muttaya library which is one of the great uh, jewels that we have today in Madras city. And uh, once I read the uh, Mutsandi Ilakyam, I then went to the Roja Muttaya library and I saw this People's Park Vainadai Chindi because it was of a, on a subject that is so close to my heart, I found it to be very fascinating. Then I decided to write an article and the rest Mr. Madhu has told you. Dr. Venkata Chalapati also says, you know, there are very interesting, this is of course structured as a couple walking down 
the road. There are things like debates where kerosene oil versus groundnut oil debating the merits of each other or whatever other oil meriting, debating with each other with coconut oil acting as the judge. <laughs> so there are things like that in these people's, uh, in this kind of uh, in this kind of literature. They were all called Gujali Padalhil because they flourished in an area of Madras known as Guzli Bazaar which is actually Evening Bazaar Road and then the area behind My Lady's Garden and People's Park. Guzili actually comes from Ghusal, which in Urdu means the private. It somehow uh, became, for instance, Khalij, which <laughs> means Gulf, became Galij, <laughs> which means dirty. I do not know how this etymology worked, but then Guzili somewhere became very secretive or fraudulent. That's because most of the goods that were stolen in Madras would be brought to Guzili Bazaar to be sold. And that's why it was called Thieving Bazaar, which later became Evening Bazaar Road after some time. So, this talk of mine only looks at retracing the paths that this couple have, has taken to come from Georgetown to Mailapur. And I am greatly indebted to my friend Karthik Bhatt, a young chartered accountant who is somewhere in the audience because it was he and I, ah, there he is, he and I went, went, to, went together and we managed to trace this, uh, these routes and uh, that is how we managed to identify all these spots. And what was very surprising is that barring one or two, we were able to locate most of the places. And which just goes to show that though heritage is dying, it's not dying fast enough. And we've managed to <laughs> locate a lot of it. So, now, Sir Maruvum Chennai Nagar Shengan Kadai Kadita Mulla Vidi Tanil, Mulla Sahib Street. Now, at first I refused to believe that there was a street called Mulla Sahib Street. And I refused to believe further that there could be a Ranganatha Swami temple in a Mullah Sahib street. But uh, evidently these things are possible. And if at all I should dedicate this talk to someone, I should dedicate it to the Aishar map of Madras, which I think is the finest map possible. I have destroyed two copies and my third copy is now close to destruction. But this, we managed to trace this and this is close to the Saukar Pet uh, area, the Elephant Gate area. And this is the intersection of Mullah Sahib Street and Anna Pillai Street. Now, this house was the only house that we could possibly think of could be the house where that girl lived. Because all the others have become RCC structures and things like that. This was the only water katadam that was there on Mullah Sahib Street. So we took this photograph. And this is actually Mullah Sahib Street. So this is where this girl must have come out wearing her Kutini Selai and Gunamana Panchavarna Pattiravikai and Patare Mathu Tangam and all that. Now, the next one is this Vaikunta Sevai Tarum Sri Ranganathar. This temple is on Mulla Sahib Street. And our Chitra Madhavan, who is somewhere in the audience here, she has included this Ranganatha Swami temple in her book, Vishnu Temples of South India, Volume 2. And uh, in that, she talks about she went inside and she, I hadn't had a bath that day so I didn't go in to let you in on shady secrets. But you know, I, she talks about the very nice and finely executed Ranganatha Swami idol which is much smaller, she says, compared to the original Sri Ranganatha Swami temple idol in Sri Rangam. There is a Tayar Sanadi, there is a Ramar Sanadi with Lakshmi and with Sita and Lakshmana and Hanumar and all that. And she says that it's very well maintained and a very clean temple. But the street is exceedingly narrow and uh, you, it is, this car is here, but it is there at its own risk. <laughs> then the couple come out and they say, Vaikunta Sevai Tarum Sri Ranganathar Sannidhi Nayakiye Kelai Arunachaleshwara Ralayattai Parai. Now, as soon as you come out of Mullah Sahib Street onto Annapillai Street, the first thing that hits you is the Arunachaleshwara Varadaraja Swami Temple, which appears to be the third twin temple of Madras. Now, we always know that Chenna Keshava and Chenna Malishwara Swami Temple in town is one twin temple. Similarly, in Chindadripet, we've got the Adi Keshava and uh, Adi Purishwara Swami Temples, which are back to back connected by one common wall. This appears to be the third temple, very little documented, documented Arunachaleshwara Vardaraja Swami temple. Both the shrines are together in the same, uh, inside the same complex. Now, when you come out of Mullah Sahib street, you turn right onto Annapillai street and this temple is there. Then the next temple that they talk about is Dharmaraja Kovilidhi. Tannir Toti Parai, there is no Tannir Toti anymore in that area, unless they meant an alcoholic. But uh, <laughs> but uh, 
this dharmaraja kovil is got a very interesting history because this is really the heart of chengam bazar or the red light district of old town now draupadi was always the patron goddess for many of the devadasi cults so it is obvious that this must have been the reason why the dharmaraja and draupadi temple stands right in the middle of annapillai street the traffic actually forks and goes around the temple now very interestingly one of the houses that are on the side of this temple is where ml vasanta kumari was born just two houses away from this uh, temple that was where madras lalitangi lived and that house is now of course considerably modified but it still stands opposite this lived an old aunt of vasanta kumari whom i went and met in 1999 her name was mohanamba and she was of course very old she was close to 90 at that time she was still living in this uh, particular road now if you go down this uh, anna pillai street you finally reach yanai kauni or elephant gate now there are so many stories as to why elephant gate but you know that is not there are not any hard and fast stories which give a clear reason so leaving that aside and saying that that's only a name you come into waltax road now waltax road of course as you know is a very peculiar name for a road but that was because after the french invasion of madras between 1747 and 1750 if they had only been here you and i would be talking in french and not in english but uh, in 1750 when they left the english decided that they will have to protect the town that they had got in exchange for quebec because in the treaty of aix la chapelle the french took back quebec and the english got back madras city and they decided to build build a build a protective wall all around the city with paul benfield the man who built the chepok palace most probably getting the contract for building the wall and a tax was levied on the residents of the city to build the wall which is why wall tax even then we were reluctant to pay taxes and there was considerable protest and the move was given up halfway the wall still survives in bits and pieces and it is so big at one place that there is a park on top of the wall in george town that's called the madi punga and uh, you climb up the steps and then there's a huge park standing on top of the wall so that in brief is waltax road now when they cross waltax road for instance they don't make any this couple doesn't make any mention about anything else they don't even talk about central station which must have already been in existence in 1915 definitely because it had come up in the previous century for some reason they don't talk about central station but coming to the end of waltax road they must have again taken to their right and crossed central station and gone to victoria public hall because the next line that you hear is victoria al tortamid now victoria public hall built in the 1880s to commemorate the golden jubilee of queen victoria's reign funded largely by the maharaja of vijayanagaram who had i think a kind of fetish for queen victoria because whatever he did he done he kind of dedicated it to her memory whether it was psychophancy or whatever it was but there is a statue outside madras university of queen victoria put up by uh, maharaja of vijayanagaram when there was a sabha called the madras gayan samaj he said he will save it only if it is renamed as madras jubilee gayan samaj so it will commemorate the jubilee of queen victoria the first program that the jubilee gayan samaj did was translating tennyson's ode to queen victoria into sanskrit and singing it and therefore you know and then of course the victoria public hall almost a, a lot of madras history has happened in this wonderful building uh the first time that electricity was demonstrated the first time cinema was demonstrated swami vivekananda has come to this particular building and spoken here a lot of our freedom fighters the theater movement owes a lot to this place pamal samanda mudaliyar's plays were all staged in this victoria public hall it can seat 1600 people and uh, it's a wonderful architecture and set in a very in its time it must have been set in a beautiful garden that has gradually shrunk and for a long period of time it has remained locked but now there are talks about restoring the building and what they've done is they have cleared the shops that are in front of the victoria public hall they are talking about a see through compound wall so that we can see the architecture of the building from outside they are talking about reviving it and making it a center for culture in this uh, city now he talks about victorial tortamid now this building never had a garden but it was part of a much larger garden which was called the people's park people's park was 116 acres in its heyday set up in uh, eight, in uh, 1859 1860 as an amenity for the people 
it housed not only Victoria Public Hall, it also housed the zoo, which is what this couple uh, sing about next because there is a very, very large description about the zoo in this poem. It talks about the various animals that were there. It also talks about a pond which existed where you could go for boat rides. You could do that as late as the 1970s. But by the time this area had become so congested that the animals were in a very bad way. So the one good thing that they did was shifting the zoo to Vandalur. When you went there, they would show you a lion and it was a study of biology because every bone in the lion's body you could see. So that was how badly these animals were all kept by the time I went there. But I must have been six or seven. I remember very clearly my mother taking us on a boat journey in that lily pond. And of course, this Kalana, Wangor, and all were not there. I don't think they were there. The men who took a bribe to show you an elephant or to show you a, a monkey or whatever it is, which is what he talks about. But a couple of very interesting things that he talks about in the Victoria Gardens or this People's Park, which obviously is not there, are not there any longer, is he talks about a tree that was planted by Prince Albert Victor. He, that is, Albert Victor was the Duke of Clarence, who was the grandson of Queen Victoria, who would have become king had he led a more clean life. But uh, by the time his father, the only problem with Queen Victoria was that she lived for too long. So her son was already 70 by the time he became king and he lasted exactly for nine years. And his son had died even before that because he had led such a debauched life that there was no way the man would have survived. But he came here in the 1880s. And there is a story that Jack the Ripper was the Duke of Clarence. Because till date we've never found out who Jack the Ripper was. And when the Duke of Clarence died, Jack the Ripper also vanished <laughs> mysteriously. So he talks about a, Jack, a tree planted by Albert Victor Durai. He also talks about a Willis Durai bungalow. This man must have probably been the overseer of the gardens. Probably. They also talk about uh, uh, this one. Uh, they talk about... Uh, Lawn mover, which in that time must have been a great uh, surprise to them. They talk about Ayahana overseer Willis Durai Avar Khalidhi Bangalore. That is what they say. And after that, they say that there is Arith. One minute, I'll just come to that. Pillarukum Vandi Idan Perime Kailai. That is, look at this lawn mover. It is able to cut the entire lawn uniformly. So it must have been a great attraction in that time to see. And then he says there is a scale where you can actually load the grass and weigh it and then sell it to the people who want to come and take it. So this is the description that he gives about this uh, area. Now, People's Park gradually shrank because Ripon Building came up on it and then behind, next to it was the Moor Market which was built at the turn of the last, at the turn of the 20th century. And of course, we hit upon the bright idea that if we didn't want a building, we could just burn it. And we've repeated that very successfully again and again. And uh, you know, that's one lesson that we've really learned very well, burning the building. So we did that and then today we've got a monstrosity in its place. But over the years, People's Park began to shrink and an ugly lily pond complex has come. It is enough to give a complex to any lily pond. It's so ugly and nobody wants to go inside and open a shop over there, but it is there. And uh, so that is really this area. He also talk, he doesn't mention this, but this is one of the last and very beautiful survivors of that entire people's park. This is my lady's garden where the flower show used to be held for a long time and where the mayor used to hold a mayoral tea party every year. The Music Academy held its initial conferences just outside the My Lady's Garden in the People's Park between 1930 and 1935. So a lot of history and it's still maintained as beautifully as ever. It's worth going there and taking a look. Now the zoo. I searched high and low for a representative photograph the fact that they act very badly, don't blame me about it. They are both terrible hams. But this is a movie that I had seen when I was 10 and I thought that it was People's Park. Mohan Raman, who is in the audience, managed to speak to the director and get reassured that yes, this was shot in People's Park. It stars S.S. Rajendran and Vijay Kumari. And it's a movie called Kakkum Karangal. And the song, I leave it to you. That's it. It's a very painful exhibition, but then uh, I wanted to show it mainly for the people's park that it shows in the background. The prince, the prison. Now they talk about the prison. Now today we will take the overbridge in front of Central Station and that will take us to Pallavan Road and from there we take Mount Road or we take Swami Sivananda Salai and go to the beach. 
but in the time when the song was written in 1915 obviously that was not there even the stanley viaduct which connected the central station to what was called the island and from the island to mount road had not yet come so the water course was running in between the uh, island and the central station so these people continue walking along central station towards the right finally they reach the government college of fine arts and take a left and then they come into chindadri pet so they take a little long winded route to do it now they obviously see the prison the prison was set up in 1837 and of course as you know it's now shifting to pural very interestingly more interesting than the prison is the fact that the song mentions these water pipes and it says that from pural eri pural eri was really where the, the red hills eri is very close to pural and that the first water supply had come to the city exactly one year before this song was written so in 1915 the song was written in 1914 the pipe water had started coming so it was obviously a very very major attraction and it was a novelty and madly was the man who created the water supply which is why we remember him in a madly's bridge in mambalam not because we go mad when we try to negotiate the traffic but there is also maloney maloney was the man who later administered the water supply and he is the man who hit upon the idea of partially treated water and partially untreated water being let in together into the city it was called maloney's mixture and i have a feeling that's why we have central metro water supply and sewerage board together <laughs> because sometimes you get metro water sometimes you get sewerage <laughs> together now uh, in the this prison has of course remained here for very long and now rightfully it is shifting our only request has been that there must be a prison museum built in at least one part of this prison land not occupying the entire land bangalore has done it bangalore central prison has moved but a part of the ba- old bangalore central prison has been converted into a museum the same thing could be done here but now the talk is about creating a prison museum in pural itself they then come into chindadri pet though they don't mention chindadri pet they say uh, oh they do one minute chindadri petai silambana palamadi kadaiyum kadai theruvum kattalagi paarai பேரால் பெருத்து பெருமையுடன் வாழ்கின்ற முருகப்ப முதலியார் முன்னாளில் கட்டின சித்திர பங்களா சிறப்பு இதனை பாராய் நோ வி டோன்ட் நோ வேர் முருகப்ப முதலியார் சித்திரை பங்களோ வாஸ் பட் சிந்தாதிரி பேட் இட் செல்ஃப் அஸ் யூ நோ இஸ் தி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டெவலப்ட் காலனி ஆஃப் மெட்ராஸ் இன் செவன்டீன் தேர்ட்டி ஃபோர் இட் வாஸ் லேண்ட் வாஸ் கிவ் டேக்கன் அவே ஃப்ரம் அ மேன் கால்ட் சுங்குராம செட்டி அண்ட் இட் வாஸ் கிவன் டு வெண்ணால நாராயண முதலியார் அண்ட் சின்னத்தம்பி முதலியார் டு டெவலப் அ காலனி ஃபார் வீவர்ஸ் சின்னத்தரி பேட்டை விச் லேட்டர் பிகேம் சிந்தாதிரி பேட்டை and that is where all the looms the people living uh, in the weaving uh, community they were encouraged to live now one part of chindadri pet stands on the banks of the river kuvam and that obviously was a major attraction because you had water for washing the cloth the weaving business that was done but later it became the road along which all the rich people of chindadri pet lived you had a series of lovely bungalows on that side uh, uh, this uh, Pachepa Mudaliyar is supposed to have lived in the corner of Harris Road and Langs Garden Road. He's supposed to have had his bath every day in the Kuvam. I don't think we can think of doing that. <laughs> and uh, next to that, next to Pachepa Mudaliyar's house was the house of Sami Nayak because they mentioned Sami Nayak and Rotai Chattamudan Kadandu. Now, this is not Sami Nayak's house because that has long gone. but his descendants belong to a very illustrious family they were judges they were mayors of the corporation they were justice party activists for a long time there was a house here called venkatabag venkatabag was the last portion of swami nayakan's property and that has also been demolished and it's become a multi story building i took this photograph only to show that there were bungalows like this on chindadri pet for a long period this still stands this is the only bungalow on langs garden road Now Langs Garden Road has been cleared of all the slums and they are talking about beautifying the road but they are not talking about cleaning up the river which is more important Now Sami Nayak himself has got a monument on Chindadri Pet Harris Road corner Who who was this Sami Nayak he was actually a medical services officer attached to the Indian Army He is also remembered for being the first vaccinator in Madras in the 1740s or 1800s and he used to go around vaccinating people to prevent them from getting illnesses and therefore he became very unpopular because he was believed to be causing pain and a group of armenian jews kidnapped him and thrashed him in order to prevent him from doing any further vaccinations 
but the government recognized his services and later he lived here and much later one of his descendants who became a judge of the madras high court w s krishnaswami naidu he got v v giri to come and inaugurate this block this was put up only in the 1970s but it stands in a small triangular park just on the corner of sindadri bet then this uh, this one talks about the madras club because it says that uh, you know pakkathile club house they have come into mount road i do not know where this tailor tachuwadi was it doesn't say tachcha chavadi it says tachuwadi maybe it was an area where tailors and uh, cobblers lived but obviously they crossed that and i do not know where sadurana ashton durai shop hal id but possibly it was on mount road where there must have been a series of lovely shopping arcades like the white way and laid law building which became victory house and later it became uh, vg panirdas and sons addisons higginbottoms possibly it was one of those buildings like that then they talk about two buildings they talk about patters totem and they talk about pakkathile club house so this is the first madras club house which stood at the end of club house road which we today remember for being the indian express uh, office now uh, this was in 1832 it was started by acquiring a lot of bungalows that stood around this area white's bungalow one side patulo's land and all that and today hicks bungalow is the only house that survives out of the original construction which is used by the ramnath goenka family this structure was largely modified by robert fellers schism the man who gave madras its indo saracenic architecture now for many years it was the indian express building in 1947 the madras club moved from here and for many years it was the indian express building then in 2004 it came up for development heritage lovers tried to get a stay but in the absence of a heritage act nothing could be done to save this property it has been demolished and now a series of hotels and malls are all coming up on the place ironically this building itself could have been renovated and used as a wonderful hotel but obviously that didn't strike anybody patters totem today we all know general patters road now one side of general patters road was fully patters totem and the opposite side was the umda bag which is today the kaide millet uh, college umda bag as well as patters gardens were both owned by a very wealthy gujarati family of madras the lord govindadas family they were not lord govindadas they were lords there were two communities the lords and the mods the mods were the kushal das chaturbhujadas family and the lords were the govindadas family kalki krishnamurthy very inspired by this title wrote a novel which had kunja ladu das and gulab jam das as the two principal characters but uh, krishna das bala mukunda das was the original and lord govindadas was the successor a man whom we remember for very many charitable acts in the city when the umda bag was required by the government he sold it at half the market price because he wanted it to be used for educational purposes he donated a lot of money to the pinjra poll to save old animals he created that little horse carriage stand that we see opposite the central station and ripon building that was out of his donation that it came he gave the music academy the land free of cost in 1937 for conducting its music conference here the congress building satyamurthy bhavan stands on patters land on lord govindadas donated land actually he gave it as a grant to the congress party today a very small portion of this patters garden still survives and that is to be demolished in the next 15 days but swami vivekananda came to this house and delivered lectures here then they talk about a tana mada kovil i could only think of the wesley church because that is at the corner of the clock tower where the woods road and the uh, westcott road intersect each other and i assume that this is the tana mada kovil because they also talk about elta pile school because the wesley school which is just next to the tana mada kovil this is the church that stands today then they talk of a tandavaraya tannir pandal it is very strange because even today during the arvathi mover at the intersection of gaudiya mat road and tandavaraya road a tannir pandal is put up so possibly they are talking about this tandavaraya and tannir pandal which must have been somewhere near this street then they obviously get a little lost because they don't 
the story up to now you know it's very straight forward you follow this couple you keep coming down then at one particular point once they've crossed this tandavara and tanir pandal they they go a little bit to pieces because the song suddenly talks about ambatta varavadi talks about prasanna vinayakar sanadi then it talks about upper swami held madam my only guess is that the couple must have got a little lost because mailapur is not the mailapur that we see today it was full of enormous stately bungalows set deep behind gardens it would have been very difficult for them to find their way and to have even asked anybody because if they came up to the upper swami held madam which is today upper swami kovil in 1852 this was built to commemorate a sadhu called upper swami who was buried here i remember as a child when my grandmother sent me to a temple she meant the kapaleshwara temple and i went to the upper swami temple and went back then she singa poi vandha i said upper swami kovil and i got a sound slap and or smashanathile poi valake edittirundha sade kapaleshwara kovil na pochane so even but today i am surprised it's been upgraded to the level of a temple and uh, all that has happened but this is the upper swami madam that he talks about but if this couple had gone further for instance they don't talk about tanir thurai market they don't talk about the anjaneya swami temple both of which were in existence but if they had gone one more step further they would have definitely got lost because on one side was the enormous vembakam gardens of the vc dechika desika chari family the other side was lakshmi vilas which belonged to buchi babu naidu all that we consider today roy peta and las corner and all that so they would have found it very difficult so what they do is obviously just trying to restructure their route they must have gone along sanskrit college gone into natu subrai mudali street gone further and finally reached the ambatavaravadi why ambatavaravadi why not ambatavaravadi all that is mr narasaya has said that there was no hamilton at all in madras history so this hamilton to barber to ambatan i don't know but karthik has pointed out in the internet that there is an insolvency petition of the 1890s if i am not mistaken which 1860s which talks about umotan bridge mailapur So even in the 1860s, if it was called the Umotan Bridge, where does this Ambatan come from? Much later, I don't know. But in its time, Major General Bala Subramaniam says it was not the big road that you see in the photograph. It was dreadfully difficult to go through this bridge full of animals jostling each other. It was a terrible mess even then. Today, it's much broader. The Ambatan Varavadi. We were very surprised to find the Prasanna Vinayakar still there. that little shrine which they talk about in the poem next to the ambatta varavadi is still standing much renovated and it's got a name plate which says prasanna vinayakar alayam there is a street also which says prasanna vinayakar kovil street unfortunately in madras you've got this tendency of giving initials to everything ramchandra guha talks about how ag ram singh became ag ram singh he came from amritsar and when he came here he said ram singh and some brahmin here said hey you should have an initial what's your hometown amritsar what's your father's name gurdyal singh therefore you are ag ram singh <laughs> so like that we've got pv kovil street which after sometimes becomes pv street munda kanni amman kovil is now called mk amman kovil street <laughs> what rubbish i'm totally shocked who is this mk amman <laughs> you know it's ridiculous what we are doing with street names there is a silvan lodge colony which is called jilvan lodge colony i am amazed at the kind of murder that we are doing in front of our own eyes to all the street names of madras but this one is now called pv street so next to <laughs> from here they finally come to the kapaleshwara temple they must have come into devadi street and from devadi street they are obviously taking a cutting and they come to witness the arvati mover festival i do not know how many of you go to see the arvati arvati mover festival my request is don't mind the crowds next time i know there is an 87 year old lady called ar sundaram who till this year manages to go and see the arvati mover festival she says that as long as i am alive i will go and see it i think it is our beholden duty to go and participate in what is in our own festival we keep complaining about the dirt which is on the road and we talk about the filth we are also contributors to it in every way so i think it is worthwhile going there despite the crowds to just go and witness what a city spirit can do if you go there on south mada street there is what is called the bommai chatram which is a small building which comes out with old dolls on that particular day and conducts an exhibition of sorts and that is the only day when it is open with those dolls only that utsavam period it is open with those dolls all 100 150 year old clay dolls on display then they close it and put it back but it's worth going and taking a look so this is really brings me to the end of the presentation and 
I end it only with a request that Kapali should always be blessing us as the patron god of our city of Madras. Thank you very much.